Hey everyone, so today I wanted to share the best and worst of Essence. Essence is one of my favorite makeup brands. I've tried pretty much everything from the brand. I was scrolling through Ulta's website and there may be a couple of products I haven't tried, but for the most part when Essence launches something, I buy it because I wanna try it out and review it. And I feel like they are one of the brands that not only keep their products affordable, but also improve the quality of their products at the same time. Most products are under $10. You can still get products for under five and I just love them so much. But there are also some products that have not worked out for me. So in today's video, I thought I would share the best and the worst of Essence. I'm going to go through four different categories. So I'll talk about face products, cheek products, lips, and then also eyes. And I'll share like my top four or five in each category and then also one or two fails. So let's start with face products. If you want to jump ahead, just check the like little slider bar and you can skip ahead or check the description box for timestamps. I have two primers from Essence that I love. The first one is the Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum primer. This is such a good product. This feels like a high-end product. A lot of people say it is a dupe for the Glow Recipe Dew Drops. The formulas are very, very similar. So if you like that glowy, hydrated base, this is a product for you. It leaves my skin feeling smooth, hydrated. It just creates the perfect base for makeup. I don't find that it really extends the wear of my makeup. They do have a gripping primer that I think works well, but unfortunately that one made me break out. But on days where I do want like that glowy, super hydrated, really beautiful base, I reach for this one. I also love this product. It has a very similar name. It's the Hello Good Stuff Primer Serum, whereas this one is the Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer. So they're very, very similar. They are both scented. I don't know if I said that earlier. This one smells like watermelon and this one smells like blueberries. So if you don't like scent, scented products or you're sensitive to fragrance, keep that in mind. But this one also hydrates the skin so nicely. It has like a little bit of a runny or I guess serum-like texture. If you tried the Smashbox Primerizer back in the day, this basically feels the same on the skin. It sinks into the skin really nicely and leaves you with the most hydrated base. I would say that this one leaves your skin looking a little bit more glowy, but this one is a little bit more hydrating. So you can't go wrong with either one of them, but they're slightly different. I don't have a ton of complexion products from Essence. I used to have their pretty natural foundation, which I really enjoyed, but I don't think that's or I don't know if it's not made anymore. It's not on Ulta's website. They might have it on the Essence website, but I do love the 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. This is such a gorgeous formula. There are really only two powder foundations I use and they're both from the drugstore, the e.l.f. camo and then also this one. I like the e.l.f. camo, but I don't typically use that as a setting powder. Whereas this one from Essence, can be used as an actual powder foundation or as a setting powder. This has such a gorgeous smooth finish and I am wearing this today under my eyes, kind of in the center of my face. I've had my makeup on for hours so my skin is looking slightly oily and this one does claim to be really mattifying but it's not quite as mattifying as the next product I'm going to mention. It just creates a very smooth, super flawless canvas. So again, if you're wearing it on its own, it's perfect because it does provide coverage and it stays in place well and it blends out so, so nicely. The problem with a lot of powder foundations is they look dry on the skin and this one doesn't. It has the most beautiful soft focus finish. So I highly recommend this one. I also love the Essence All About Matte Powder. Now this is going to be like a love it or hate it type of product. If you have extremely oily skin, then I think you'll love this. I just repurchased it because I just used my other one up earlier this week. And I go through one of these every single summer without fail. Like since I want to say like 2014, 2015, it is my favorite summer setting powder because it does lock your makeup into place and it keeps your skin matte all day long. Even if it's like 90 degrees outside, even if it's super humid and you're sweating, like this really does work to lock your makeup into place. That being said, if you have dry skin or combo skin or any sort of dryness on your skin at all, this is going to enhance that. So I really only recommend this if you have extremely oily skin and that's why I typically go through it every single summer because I won't usually use it the rest of the year, but it's such a good mattifying powder and I think it's like $4. So my fail in this category would be the Hydro Hero Primer. This product just didn't work for me. I love a good hydrating primer and I had such a great experience with these two. I thought I would try this one out, but it did not hydrate my skin. Like the second I blended it into my skin, 
it just felt like it dried instantly. And when I wore foundation on top, the foundation would just separate and move around, which was really strange because it didn't have like a slippery feel to it. It didn't feel hydrating at all. It felt like nothing once it dried down, but foundation does not wear well on top of that. So I don't recommend picking that up. I mean, if you're going for a hydrating option, just stick with one of these. These work really, really well. Let's talk cheek products. Essence typically does a really good job with their cheek products and they've had a few newer launches that I cannot stop wearing. These are the illuminating powders or the Kiss by the Light illuminating powders. These can be used in a few different ways depending on your skin tone or the way you like to wear your makeup. They are basically like three different powders mixed together. So this one has some different bronzer shades mixed with a highlighter. And then this one has like a blush tone mixed with a bronzer mixed with a highlighter. So sometimes I'll just take the highlighter and use that as a typical highlighter. That's what I did today with this shade. But sometimes I'll mix all the colors together and use it either on top of a matte bronzer to add a little bit more glow or by itself. Instead of applying like a separate bronzer, blush, and highlighter, I might just just use this product and blend it all over my cheeks. They can be used in so many different ways. You can also use them as eyeshadow and inner corner highlight. The powder itself is so smooth. Like this feels and looks like a high-end powder on the skin. And I just think they are gorgeous. And I think these are a nice addition to your collection because they're a little bit different than your typical cheek products. Like I said, you can use them alone or layer them on top of other products. And they just really come in handy for me. So these are beautiful. I love these. They also launched the Pure Nude Baked Blushes earlier this year. And this has become one of my favorite formulas. At this point, I have almost all of them because whenever I place an Ulta order, I usually add another shade that I've wanted onto my order because they're affordable. They're like $6. Essence goes on sale all the time. So if there is like a buy one, get one half off sale, I'll usually grab something I want to repurchase and then also a newer product I haven't tried. So again, at this point, I think I, I have almost all of them and I love them all for different reasons. They're all a little bit different. Like some have really obvious shimmers, some are a little bit more matte. This one is in the shade Rosy Rosewood. I've been wearing this one a ton, like late spring, early summer, because it kind of gives you like that almost sunburnt look like you've been outside and it's just so, so pretty. So I think these are great. I do think they're very similar to the Hourglass blushes. They're not identical dupes, but that's what they remind me of. And I actually like these better because I think they have better color payoff. So if you're looking for an affordable blush from the drugstore, a powder blush, these are currently like my number one top pick. These are a little bit older, but they're still great. They're just called the blush. They have four different options and they have two shimmery ones. And then they also have two matte ones. If you want something that's a little bit more, that's not like a baked product, these are nice. The pure nude products are like true baked blushes. And I know that texture isn't for everyone. So if you want more of like a traditional powder blush that's not baked, these are nice. They're very silky, really, really smooth. They blend onto the skin so nicely. Like they don't enhance texture. They look very even, very soft. Actually, I'm wearing a little bit of this one today. This one is Bespoke. I have a little bit of the Pure Nude Baked Blush in the shade Pretty Peach on top. So I have like a combination of these two cheek products. But this is like my essential summertime blush. I've had it for years. I've repurchased it a few times. It is gorgeous. I reach for it so so much. My fail in this category is the blush. I really wanted to love their Baby Got Blush formula. It's basically like a cream blush stick. And when you swatch it on your hand, it has such a beautiful luminosity to it. And that does show up on the cheeks, but I feel like it's very tricky to work with. If you deal with texture on your skin like me, this product is going to really cling to the texture and enhance it. And I also felt like the cream itself was a little bit thicker, so it looked really heavy on my skin. They did launch a bronzer. I think it's called like the Baby Got Bronzer, which I really wanted to try, but because I do deal with a lot of texture and it just looked and kind of felt heavy, I decided to skip over that one. I know some people do really like that formula, but for me, it just didn't look great on my skin. If you have really smooth skin or if you have, you know, dry skin and you don't mind a little bit of a heavier cream, then you might enjoy that, but I just feel like there are other cream blushes I prefer over that one. Okay, let's do lips. This actually would have been a fail in the cheek category for me, but it is such a hit in the lip category that it's one of my favorite products. It's the Essence What a Tint Lip and Cheek. So obviously it's meant to be used on the lips or the cheeks. I don't love using this on the cheeks because it does end up looking a little bit patchy on me and it's hard to get like an even smooth blend. 
but on the lips, it is perfect. It gives your lips the most beautiful, gorgeous stain. You can use a little bit and just tap it on, or you can really layer it up, and the stain actually lasts throughout the day. There are so many lip stains coming out like every single week, and a lot of expensive lip stains. And if this one came in more shades, it would be that would be amazing. But I do think this shade would be really flattering on all different skin tones because it is customizable, and you can use a lighter, softer layer or also get something a little bit more intense. So I love this this as a lip stain. I don't like it as a cheek product, but if you just buy it strictly for the lips, I think you'll love it too. These Essence Juicy Balm lip glosses are one of the most affordable lip glosses you can buy. These are $2.99, but they're so good. They almost have like a little bit of like a lip oil texture. They're very thin, very, very glossy, super hydrating, really comfortable, and they have all different scents. So I have Sweet Peach, and then I also have Watermelon Crush. Some are a little bit more pigmented than others, like Sweet Peach is very, very sheer, and Watermelon Crush is a little bit more intense. But I think that's great because you can choose one that kind of works for you and your makeup preferences. These are perfect to like throw in your bag or throw in your wallet or have in your car. They're really easy to apply and they're so comfortable and glossy, so I love these. Another glossy lip product from Essence I really enjoy would be the Extreme Care the label kind of wore off. I wrote it down. The Extreme Care Hydrating Glossy Lip Balm. Okay, so these come in three different shades. I think there is like a light soft pink or it's a clear. And then there's this one, which is more of like a medium toned pink. Well, it's called Soft Peach. And then this one, which is called Milky Cocoa. These are really pigmented lip glosses, but they also have a little bit of a balmy texture. They're like a liquefied lip balm mixed with a lip gloss. So they feel very hydrating on the lips once you initially apply them, but even after after they wear off. I do think they wear pretty well for more of a glossy formula. Like they don't wear off super quickly because they are a little bit thicker. They have like a very plush feel to them. So I think they're nice to wear on their own over lipstick that's more dry and uncomfortable or more of a matte finish. I wish they had more shades because typically I'm not the biggest fan of like a super pigmented lip gloss, but because this formula is so good, like the quality is amazing, I do find myself reaching for these quite a bit. So if there is a shade that appeals to you, I definitely recommend checking them out. Essence makes a lot of great lipsticks. I feel like they've had a couple of different lines over the years, but my favorite lipstick line they've ever done is the This Is Nude line. This formula feels like a high-end formula. It's very lightweight, but also incredibly hydrating. It almost has like a little bit of a cooling feel to it as you apply it to the lips. They're really richly pigmented, but they're not like thick. It feels really thin on the lips. So I love these because I could wear them all day long. They're incredibly comfortable and they have an entire range of nudes. I'm wearing this one today, 05 Legendary. I have a little bit of like a lighter gloss on top, but they're just really nice. I mean, if you said these were like $30 lipsticks from Sephora, I would totally believe it. The packaging feels a little bit cheap, but the actual formula does feel like a high-end or luxury formula. I'm a big believer in drugstore lip liners. You do not have to spend a lot of money to get a really high quality lip liner. And Essence lip liners never let me down. These are the eight hour matte comfort lip liners. These are so good. I love the fact that they are a little bit thinner so you can just like precisely line your lips. But once you apply this product and you let it dry down, it does not move until you're ready to take it off. My fail in this category is something that I've kind of gone back and forth on. Like I would not call it the worst product I've ever tried, but they do have a lip gloss line and I think they kind of redid an existing line and came out with this one. So a lot of people were disappointed because the formula was a little bit different. I think it's called like the Extreme Shine Lip Gloss line. I'll put a picture on the screen. They do have a ton of shades, which is really nice. Some have a little bit more pigment than others. Some are more sheer. They're supposed to be kind of like plumping lip glosses that give your lips a lot of volume. I definitely didn't find that to be the case. And I felt like they wore off so, so quickly. Unlike this formula, after like an hour, I felt like my lips were dried out and the lip gloss or the shiny finish was completely gone. They also had a very intense like scent and taste. There was almost a little bit of like a chemical fruity taste and scent that was really, really noticeable. So again, not the worst lip gloss,
gloss I've ever tried by any means. I feel like lip gloss is kind of hard to mess up these days, but there are so many other good alternatives that I would recommend skipping over that one. Let's finish up with eyes. So one thing that Essence does a lot of would be mascara. I think most of their mascaras are under $5. They have a ton of options. So whether you're looking for volume or length or separation or lift, you can typically find one that is kind of meant to target those specific needs. My favorite Essence mascaras after all these years are still the Lash Princess mascaras. I like all of them. My favorite is Curl and Volume because I think it does an all around good job of actually lifting your lashes and adding a lot of drama. So this is one that I've repurchased quite a bit over the years, but I also like the False Lash Effect. That one gives me a ton of length. I know some people don't like the Lash Princess mascaras because they say they smudge on them. That's not usually an issue for me because my lashes are a little bit shorter, so I don't typically experience that, but I do think they're really great. And everyone that I talk to, like that I know, like friends or family or cousins or whatever, they tell me they love the Essence mascaras over more expensive alternatives. So I still think they're great. They're definitely a tried and true favorite. I think I tried them for the first time back in like... I want to say 2014, and ever since then, I've always had one on rotation. Or maybe not on rotation, but I've always had one in like my backup drawer. I don't do a ton of backups. I used to have like a lot of my favorite products as backups, and I don't do that anymore because I find that my preferences change and makeup expires, but I always have one of these on hand because again, I usually do buy one when they're on sale. I also recommend trying their Volume Booster Lash Primer. I think there are more expensive versions of products like this, but you really don't have to spend a lot of money on a lash primer because this one from Essence does such a great job. So I'll use this in a few different ways. I'll use it before I apply mascara to kind of enhance the effects of my mascara. I especially like pairing it with mascaras that don't work that well for me because it's a nice way to kind of save them rather than having them go to waste. I also like pairing this with colorful mascara, which I don't wear a lot of these days, but I do find it kind of helps to boost the color because my lashes are dark. If it is like a mascara that would blend into my lashes, like a dark blue or maroon, something like this is nice because it allows the color to really show through. So this product works really well. It definitely comes in handy. The Essence Waterproof Eyeliner Pen, again, has been a favorite for years. And sometimes I just go back to this one and I use it over and over. And then sometimes I like more of a brush tip. It kind of depends on my mood. But the reason why I like this one is because it is a felt tip liner, but it's not like an extremely flexible felt tip liner. Sometimes when it comes to felt tip liners that are so flexible, it's hard to create the wing I want to create because the the tip is just bending all over the place. And what's weird is like sometimes I want that. That's why I like a good brush tip applicator that's a little bit more flexible, but sometimes I don't want that. It's just, it depends on my mood. The reason why I do like this one too is because it shows up really well on top of like super metallic or foiled eyeshadow. Sometimes when you're putting liquid liner on top of a you know, foiled eyeshadow, it almost blends into the eyeshadow. That's not the case with this one. It's really intense, very, very vibrant, and I feel like it just, it works well. It's great, it's affordable, I love it. This is a little bit of a newer launch, or I guess it came out a few months ago, but I've almost used it up fully. It is the Prime Like a Boss Eyeshadow Base. This is a really nice texture. It's very, very creamy, and it's funny because today I couldn't find this because it was sitting in this tray, like over here, ready for me to use it for filming, and I had to use the Urban Decay Primer Potion, which has been a favorite of mine for years. You're not really going to be able to tell when I swatch this, but this one is just so much better than that one. It's very, very creamy, and I think my Urban Decay Primer Potion is maybe a little bit dried out, but I won't go back to that one after using this one because I think this one does such a great job. It feels really smooth on the skin. It has like a creamy texture to it. So when I apply eyeshadow on top, it almost allows like any eyeshadow to look extra smooth. I just got to the end of the video and I realized I forgot to mention these when I was talking about eye products. So I'll probably edit this in where I was talking about eye products, but I'm filming it at the very end. These are so good. They're like $4 eyeshadow palettes. They have a ton of different options. And I think they're just very easy to work with. The shadows blend out so perfectly. The shimmers look amazing on the eyes. And they're just, they're like the nicest option when you don't want to think too much about your eyeshadow and you just want a little bit of a softer look. They do have like the occasional deeper, more dramatic shade in them that you can use to build up the look as well. But typically I'll use these when I don't want anything too over the top. 
and they're great. Super affordable, perform so, so well. So I actually have two fails in this category. The first one would be the Lash Princess Eyeliner. I wanted to like that liquid liner so much. I was so excited when they were launching it because obviously I love the Lash Princess mascaras. I rave about them. I think they work so, so well, but the eyeliner was such a fail. First of all, I feel like the actual eyeliner tip was just a little bit too big. So every time I went to apply liquid liner, I ended up with a really thick line and then, and my wing was just way too big. It got out of hand so so, so fast. It was hard to create more of like a precise thin line when I used it. I liked the fact that the packaging was a little bit bigger because it was almost easier to hold onto, but the actual tip was just a little bit too thick. They came out with a few. They had a brown one, a regular one, and then also a waterproof one, and none of them stayed in place well on me. They would like smear and smudge so, so quickly and just bleed all over the place. So I personally didn't love those. I know they've gotten some mixed reviews. Some people love them, but I think a lot of people hate them too. The other fail for me is actually one of their mascaras. I do think their mascaras tend to be kind of hit and miss for me because they launch so many, and at any given point in time, like they have like an entire row of them. If you go into to like an actual Ulta store. Chances are when that's the case, like there are going to be formulas you love, but also formulas that you just hate. So the one that did not work for me is one that I know a lot of people actually like. I think it's called the Volume Stylist Mascara. I think they had two different ones, one for actual volume and then one for more length. And neither one of them looked great on me. They, I just felt like they didn't do anything for my lashes. The reason why I like the Lash Princess Mascaras is because they have almost more of like a wet, formula to them. So I do love a good wet mascara because I think it tends to build really, really well. And the volume stylist mascaras are more on the dry side. So I felt like it was hard to build them up and get the drama that I wanted. But again, I know some people really love those. So I would read through the reviews and just decide if you think they would work for you based on your preferences. But for me, they were a fail. Okay, that's everything I wanted to share with you in today's video. I feel like I went through those products kind of quickly, and I think it's because I had so many of them. I just thought it was going to take me forever, so I was kind of speeding through it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other drugstore brands you want me to do like a best and worst of, and I'll definitely add them to my list, and I'll link a couple of other ones on the screen for you right now. But thanks again for being here. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.